Have you ever wondered why some people manage to accumulate wealth while others continue to struggle with debts and endless expenses? Why have you never learned about money in school? What you have never learned about money in your entire life? You will learn in this short video. Get ready for a journey of discovery where we'll reveal secrets about how money really works far beyond just saving. Let's delve into the world of personal finance, entrepreneurship, and much more. Are you ready to change the way you think about money? Then stay tuned, because this is a conversation you won't want to miss. Do you know the boxer Mike Tyson? Well, he was the greatest boxer of all time, earned millions of dollars throughout his life. It's estimated he made over $300 million during his career. However, he declared bankruptcy in 2003 with a debt of $30 million. So I ask you, why do many of our actions or motivations in life have an unrestrained desire to get a lot of money? Tell me, why do you want it so badly? Especially when the big problem seems to be our ability to manage it. Now learn a great lesson. Money doesn't take insults. It's an excellent employee, but a terrible boss. Learn to master it, or it will master you. Americans now have the highest credit card debt in history. You've learned nothing. Debt is an invisible burden carried by the most vulnerable in the country. Of course, this isn't everyone's reality, but consider for a moment your own attitude towards money and how money manifests in your own life. What is money to you? When you receive some amount, how long does it stay in your possession? Probably it leaves your hand very quickly, doesn't it? This has put you in a vulnerable position, a vulnerability that brought you close to a quick enrichment scheme. And that's when you'll see an advertisement from a guru saying you can get rich if you buy his course. Although my entire channel aims to address these topics in one way or another, I realize that our perceptions about money are sometimes more crucial than our ability to generate it, especially when our own brains are wired in a way that prevents us from being financially free. Does it really matter if you're earning more than six figures a year? If by the end of this year, you have nothing left in your account, where does that make sense? It's time to solve this mystery, and not only that, but explore a better way to understand money. The truth is, we've been taught to earn money and spend it right away. But in reality, it should be earning money, investing a good portion, saving, and only then spending. Now think, what is money? Or better, what does money represent? When you make a purchase on a free market, when you get paid for your time working at a job, what's the meaning of money in these transactions? Money is commonly defined as a medium of exchange, a tool that facilitates the sale, purchase or trade of goods between parties. But I don't believe that says much about what money truly represents. I think the best way to look at money is as an expression of value. You hand over a certain amount of money to buy something because you perceive its value to be equivalent to the amount of money you handed over. Of course, the price is often not determined by you as an individual, but by the market as a whole. But focus on this point. Money equals value. Why is this so important? Because we often give money a moral meaning. A quote that I'm sure you've heard is that money is the root of all evil. We look at someone who seems to have a great deal of wealth and think they got lucky in life or were dishonest, that someone had to lose for them to gain. And it never crossed your mind that the person generated value to earn that money. Understanding that to earn a lot of money, you have to generate a lot of value. That's the best way to understand that money isn't necessarily bad, nor does it make a person bad. Sure, there are things like scammers who convince you that what they have to sell is worth it, but that doesn't say much about money, more about the person themselves. Money simply opens up your options and broadens your horizons. The choices you make with that money have everything to do with your own moral dispositions, so money is an expression of value. Money just amplifies who the person already is. If a person became arrogant when they got a good amount of money, it's because they've been like that all their lives. They just never showed it. Now that they have money, it has amplified what they already were. If a person is humble without money, with money in their pocket, they will become even more humble because money only amplifies what the person already is. 
Now, how does this change the reality for someone who lives from paycheck to paycheck or someone who is consumed by credit card debts? Simply mentioning that money equals value doesn't change anything. Can I make you see money in a different way? But how much of that is practical advice? To answer that question, I'll need to ask you another question. What's your relationship with money? Money will come into your life and go away. This is a relationship that's often expressed by your revenues and expenses. Another practical way to express this, which I particularly like, is your production versus your consumption. For the most part, money will come into your life because you've produced some form of value. And for most of us, that value will come in the form of work, a job. Money will leave when you consume something, a Netflix subscription, a new car, a house, travels and other things. In many ways, we can look at an individual's net worth as a metric to determine their relationship between consumption and production. Consider yourself for a moment. Think about all the money that came in and out of your life. How much of it do you still have in possession today or invested in some form of asset? Do you think it's unbalanced or needs improvement? The likelihood is both, but for most of us, the biggest issue lies in our consumption. There's a study revealing that 98% of Brazilian workers spend their entire salary. It also found that among workers who made $100,000 or more per year, one in 10 of them also spends their entire salary. Now you could argue that someone earning six figures a year may still want more, but when you receive an amount well above the average salary and the cost of living, and yet you find a way to spend it all, I'd say your relationship with consumption needs fixing even before you earn more money. Since any rich celebrity who filed for bankruptcy can show us that earning a lot of money means nothing when you have a consumption problem, a reckless, endless, self-destructive, or meaningless pursuit. You work hard, but money never stays in your hand. It's not about working a lot that will make you earn a lot of money. It's about working in the right way and generating value. Instead of selling your time, try selling a product because your time is limited, but the products you can sell can be infinite. Now things are starting to make sense for you. A true rat race is someone living on the financial edge just a step away from bankruptcy, constantly feeling like the moment money comes into their life, it immediately disappears. And the more responsibilities you have, the more dangerous this relationship becomes. Losing a job, an unexpected health accident, or any unforeseen circumstances like that can put your entire financial situation in crisis. The first step to organizing your financial life is to become aware of your relationship with money. This is often done by recording your monthly expenses, jotting down everything like rent, transportation, food, clothing, entertainment, and so on. It's about understanding yourself as a consumer. But this part is tough in behavioral finance. This feeling can often be labeled as the ostrich effect, which is our tendency to want to avoid negative financial information. It's that feeling you have when you refuse to look at your bank account after a night out, fearing what it might show. And yet, after going through this stage, it's time to take control of your behavior as a consumer. This often involves the idea of making a budget, deciding each month how much you intend to spend in each of these categories and sticking to it. It's about systematically observing what you consume and finding ways to minimize those things to ultimately live below your means. In other words, having a lifestyle that still leaves you enough money to save and invest in one way or another. It's also important to note that before deciding to invest, one of the most common practices in personal finance is to maintain an emergency fund, a specific amount in savings that you keep in case of emergencies. This reserve would be an amount equivalent to three to six months worth of expenses. But why is the idea of living below your means important? Why would we choose to do the opposite? Why would we choose to live a lifestyle we can't afford? I could make an entire video about our cognitive biases. The ostrich effect is just one of them that can affect your financial condition. There's a tendency to favor short-term rewards as opposed to larger rewards in the future. You choose to buy a new pair of shoes instead of saving that money for a future investment. 
Most of the time, you don't even need the new shoes. You just bought them to impress people you don't even like. When people around you are buying something, you also buy, simply to not have that feeling that you're falling behind. When your neighbor buys a new car, you buy one too. They buy expensive clothes, you want to buy them too. They renovate the house, you do it too. All in an attempt to impress or try to keep up with others due to some form of social pressure. Yet in today's world, they're not just literal neighbors. They're much more present than that. We're all vulnerable to social approval. We really care about what other people think of us. But the problem is that we measure our self-esteem by the number of people who like what we post on social media. To be clear, I'm not saying that buying an expensive piece of clothing, jewelry or a new car is a bad thing, nor do I think that consuming is a bad thing. The aim of this video is not to philosophize about the repercussions of a materialistic view of the world. It's about drawing attention to who you are as a consumer. Do you care more about appearing to have money or actually having money? Be careful, this business of pretending to be rich can make you truly poor. The rat race isn't just working from nine to five in a job, but living a lifetime chasing things, be it a paycheck or a material possession, so that your biggest life goals and ambitions are sidelined to continue this race. Do you want to get out of this race? It's fun to talk about making money or imagine having as much wealth as possible. But what's the point when your relationship with money as a consumer means losing everything or having to work non-stop to fund that lifestyle? That's the true rat race. Do you want to get out of this race? It's fun to talk about making money or imagine having as much wealth as possible. But what's the point when your relationship with money as a consumer means losing everything or having to work non-stop to fund that lifestyle. That's the true rat race. But with all that said, let's talk about how to make money now. Let's delve a little deeper into the stock market and opportunities to earn money. Because for a long time, personal finance channels and stocks have been great to learn how to invest your money. However, if there's one thing I wish they talked more about, it would be the ability to make money. And I understand why they don't do this. It's easier to reduce your expenses in the amount you consume than to increase your income by speaking to a mass audience. Advising things that will work for most people is usually the best choice. A movement that adopts the strategy of living extremely, saving every penny and investing as soon as possible, intending to retire as early as possible. Minimalists also share a similar view although more rooted in philosophical positions about the world and materialism. Largely, people who create this style of video related to finances promote strategies that fit in the spectrum of living with little, saving a lot of money, and investing in the long term. And there's nothing wrong with that strategy. It mainly works for people who earn a lot of money like they do. But let's be honest, they don't need to cut back on coffee or live a lifestyle below expectations because they already earn millions of dollars every month. Nor do they rely on these strategies to have a profitable business valued at a billion dollars. These people are using a large-scale means of production. Do you know what the secret is? The most impactful way to increase your value is to find a problem in the market. Create a solution for that problem and sell that solution to the market on a large scale. This is the entrepreneurial path in which a successful company at scale can produce a large amount of value for society such that your productive side of the equation grows exponentially compared to a standard job. But this is not a path everyone can or should try to follow. It's about reflecting on your own capabilities and whether entrepreneurship is more suitable for your direction. That said, to increase your income, don't rely solely on your salary. Look for a way to have a second source of income. Rich Dad uses YouTube as a vehicle to produce something, in this case, videos about personal finances on a large scale. It's one of the reasons why I chose to create videos on YouTube as well. It's a vehicle to produce something, in this case, stoic-style videos on a large scale, to a point where now I can do this full-time and build a business around it. Production is providing value relative to the market in some way. I used my acting skills 
presenting narratives and video editing to create videos that I hope are fun and educational. And fortunately, the market responded positively. Your form of production might be developing an app or software that is solving a problem you believe the market would pay for your solution. For most people, work in the form of a standard job from nine to five will be their means of production. But that doesn't mean your ability to produce stops there. Understanding yourself as a producer is about understanding ways in which you can produce value for the market. If you can produce value on a large scale, then that means earning money on a large scale. Fortunately, the internet has provided many opportunities for us to produce something and put it in the market. Whether the market really wants what you've produced can only be determined after you've launched everything you've produced. So to summarize, it's important first to become aware as a consumer, understanding what you buy and why you buy it. Recording your consumption in a notebook and then establishing a budget to manage and control that consumption. Production then becomes a matter of maximizing the amount of value you can bring to society through work, a company, or some other means of production. It's a framework that has helped me a lot, just as I'm sure it has helped countless other people interested in making money. Before you leave this video, I want to say one thing. Thank you so much for watching until the end. You're still here, which is proof that I provided some kind of value to you in one way or another. So be sure to click the like button. And if you want to see more videos on finance, money, entrepreneurship and business topics in general, feel free to click the subscribe button. I also want to recommend two books for you to read as soon as possible. The first is Secrets of the Millionaire Mind and the second is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. These two books will open your mind a lot about money. But that's it, my friends. I hope you have a blessed day. But don't go away just yet. If you want me to do part two of this video, then comment, do part two, and I'll do it. Big hug, and until the next video.